best professional poker players and four of the luckiest amateurs have met in Aruba to fight over a total prize pool of $350,000. The World Poker Tour hits the beach in Aruba. Shuffle up and deal. World Poker Tour is a series of international poker tournaments featuring some of the biggest games and the largest payouts on the planet. Today, we're on the exotic island of Aruba for the UltimateBet.com Ultimate Poker Classic. It's the third stop on this high-stakes journey around the world. And today, everything's wild. Some of the world's top professional poker players are here, along with amateurs who won their seats by winning tournaments online at Ultimate Bet. And at the end of the day, we're pitting the pro champ against the top amateur, one-on-one, -on -one, for a $25,000 seat at the World Poker Tour Championship Final, where the payday could be in the millions. <laughs> now, down to the WPT Arena, where poker champ Mike Sexton and celebrity poker star Vince Van Patten are in the middle of all the action. Welcome to the World Poker Tour Ultimate Poker Classic. I'm Vince Van Patten, along with my good friend Mike Sexton, and we are in beautiful Aruba, living like true gamblers should. You know, Vince, we're entering a new era for the poker world. The days of the smoke-filled poker rooms in the back of pool halls, those days are history. Now, we're watching a new format, too. This is a unique kind of tournament. Let's, let's talk about that. It is sort of unique concept in that they have two separate divisions here. They have what they call an amateur division, where 100 players qualified online to earn their trip down here and play in this championship. And then they have a professional division, where they invited eight top professional players in the world to come down and play. Each of those two divisions have played down to the final four, which is what we're going to see today. The winner of each of those divisions will meet in a classic heads-up battle. It's a David versus Goliath to determine the ultimate poker classic champion. That's right. And the winner of that, of course, goes to the World Poker Tour event next April where there's millions of dollars at stake. So this is a very, very important tournament. Okay. Predictions. We've done this a few other times. You make your predictions. Whoever you predict seems to be knocked out first. You are the true kiss of death. So who do you like this time? <laughs> well, this time I think we have two clear-cut favorites. On the amateur side, I like Kathy Liebert to win this side. She has the most experience at the table. Excellent no-limit holding player. And on the professional side, I like Phil Helmuth. I think he's the number one seed in all no-limit hold'em tournaments. Okay, very good. You put the kiss of death on them. I will take, <laughs> because I think there's a lot of luck involved. On the amateur side, the blinds are so big that uh, I like Juha from Finland. I played with him the other night on a ring game. He, he tapped me out. He broke me. And on the professional side, I will take uh, Phil Gordon, who seems like a very lucky man. So uh, that's our predictions. So let's listen to the chips clatter. Let's watch the cash flow. And let the battle of poker begin. We're playing No Limit Hold'em. Two cards down and five cards up for everyone to play, and you can lose it all in a single hand. As our amateur tournament gets underway, Yuha Helpy is our chip leader. He's only 25 years old and flew in from Finland to play this tournament. Next to him is Woody Moore, solid wood as they call him. He's got plenty of poker experience under his belt, but he's also our short stack with only 43,000. On the other side of the table, Kathy Liebert. Kathy's a seasoned pro who snuck into the amateur tournament by qualifying online. She has 253,000 in chips. Now in the seat next to her, Ansi Tuli Verda. He's another Finnish player. He's a friend of Yuha, and he just started playing poker three months ago. He has 181,000. Okay, action's underway. Now, Woody Moore's a short stack with only 40,000 in chips, but Woody has the experience, and he knows what it takes to win. Woody Moore, real solid player. We call him old school poker. He plays really solid, maybe a little extra tight. But believe me, he's not intimidated. He will push you in when he has to. So I just lost a $140,000 pot right before he got down to the final four. So I have to get very lucky tomorrow. Well, he's looking at his hand. It's not much of a hand. It's just a queen eight with different suits. What's he going to do? This is really exciting, Vince, to get to see these players' cards because the viewers are going to get a nice insight on what these players are actually thinking. Now, Woody Moore is an experienced poker player, but he's a limit hold'em player. This is no he's limit poker. He's going to go all in. He's doing he's going all in. Woody Moore is moving all in. in. Woody Moore is all in on the first hand. I have a big hand. Well, Woody announces he has a big hand. Of course he doesn't, but the crowd likes it. Kathy throws her 9-5 off suit away. Call him. 
Auntie has called him. Well, he has five Jack of Diamonds. Anna, Interesting. Calls. Oh. And you, Hoff, is going to call 10,000 more, even though he only has a Jack Six of clubs. You are calls. Now, don't forget, when you're four-handed you down, you got to play lesser cards. You can't wait for big kings and aces every time. you got to play a little looser, well, and that's what these in. guys are doing. So here we go. We have Auntie and you, Hoff. Against Auntie. Woody Moore is all in against him. Flop comes ace. The jack comes jack on the flop. It comes ace, jack, three. Auntie checks. Auntie's checking. He has a pair checks. of jacks, and so is well, Yuha. Well, they both have jacks. They've checked. Turn cards, a tray of hearts. Auntie checks. Yuha checks. Next card's an eight of diamonds. Flush possibility. Auntie has just hit a flush. So what's he going to do here? He has the jack five of diamonds. He's made a diamond flush. Auntie has just made a, a huge hand. Check. Maybe he's trying to trap his friend. No, he Turn checks it up. He's going to show it. Woody's got Woody eights. Moore turns up the queen high. Auntie's it's not good. Woody is out of the tournament. The he Woody jacks. Moore had no choice but to go all in there. Ironically, he had the best hand. He had a queen eight over a jack six and a jack five. He got a little unlucky that a jack flopped up there. Woody Moore, our fourth place finisher, will take home 6000 from Aruba and a beautiful memory and a beautiful vacation. So long, Woody. Back to the golf course. Woody, great playing. I'm just very happy to make the final four. It was a great event. Now they're down to three. And every time you see a player get knocked out of a tournament, you get a little tingle up your spine, you're excited, you get close to that big money. For those of you that are new to the game, we've got a quick tutorial on how to play Texas Hold'em. The game is No Limit Hold'em, the Cadillac of poker. It's a game that takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. To start, each player is dealt two cards face down. Then, five community cards, cards everyone can play, are placed face up on the table. Each player combines their two hidden down cards with the community cards to make their best five card poker hand. And betting is really what this game is all about. Let me explain. You get your first two cards, you make a bet. Then, the dealer puts the first three community cards on the table. In poker, we call this the flop. They bet again. Then the dealer puts the fourth community card on the table. This is called the turn card. Once again, big round of betting. Then, the last card. We call this the river. It's turned up on the table. They make a big last round of betting. Turn your cards over. You see who wins. They call it no limit hold'em because there's no limit on how much a player can bet. At any moment, he can declare that he is all in and push all of his chips into the pot. Right. And that makes chip position, or how many chips you have, very, very important in this game. And with that pot, Ansi moves into second chip position. Yuha from Finland is our chip leader. Ansi in second chip position with 270,000. And Kathy Liebert in third place with 250,000. Ansi first, he's going to fold the hand. Now Yuha. I'll say one thing for the Finn twins here. They were extremely confident going into this final here. They really believe that they're going to win this tournament. I don't think they really understand how good Kathy is, to be honest with you. Now, Yuha has a nine and a seven, but they're Price both hearts, and he's going to raise it. He's an aggressive Yuha player. He's raising it up. More. Put a little Call pressure 80. on our pro, Kathy Liebert. He's raised out of the small blind with the nine, seven of hearts. Now, Kathy has a seven, five of diamonds. It's suited. you got to play kind of loose when it's down to three hands. What's she going to do? She's smiling. She's smiling. It's tempting. It's tempting. You never know. She's throwing it she away. She throws her hand Happy away. Looks like she was thinking about moving her hand. chips over the top of him there. That would have been impressive. Yuha takes that pot, and he and Kathy are starting to mix it up. Kathy is normally an aggressive poker player. She does play back over the top. She's got a lot of heart when it comes to playing No Limit Poker, and she's looking forward to taking on Yuha today. He's going to gamble with me, and I'm going to gamble with him, so we'll see what happens. Ansi <laughs> has the button. Now, the button, you're going to be hearing a lot about the button in this tournament, is that little white hockey puck that moves around the table each hand. It tells the dealer where to start dealing. And the two players to the left of the dealer button have force bets called blinds. The blinds make sure there is action and money in the pot on every hand. Now, Ansi just picked up a 6, 7 of hearts, a suited connector. Now, he's throwing it away. He's throwing it away. That's not a bad hand when structure is this big. Now here comes Yuha out of the small blind. 
can I please have the chip count? Now, this is very interesting. He's asking for a chip count for her. He's trying to act like he's strong when, in fact, he might be weak. And let's see if Kathy picks up on this. Well, you know what? He only has nine and a jack, two different suits. It's not a very strong hand. This guy's either going to call or raise, you could tell. Well, most people might try to limp in with this to try to see a flop, see if they can catch something with it. You've got to play really aggressive and really fast. That's how you have to play three-handed tournament poker. Raise 50,000. He's raising it 50,000 more. Now, Kathy looks at it for the first time. She knew she was only studying the players. Then she looked at the cards. She's called 15,000, raised it 50,000 She's going all in, Mike. Kathy, Kathy is coming all over in, the top. She has the queen, ten of spade. You have to admire her fortitude here. She has sensed weakness in Yuha. Indeed, he is weak. She is raised with the queen, ten of spade. She's a top pro. She understands that with the structure as it is, you've got to get in there and gamble. She's doing so, and she's picked out a perfect time to do it in that Yuha only has a jack nine off suit. Now let's see what Yuha does. It looks like he's gonna call this hand. I don't know how he can. Yeah. It's another 115,000 to him. I think it's a bad play on his part with a jack nine off suit. He's essentially saying he has to outdraw Kathy to win this pot. Yuha calls, we got a pot. They're turning over the cards. Turn them up. Now Kathy's Yuha gonna love it when she sees nine. this hand. She's got up. Yuha has jack nine off suit. Kathy has queen 10 suited. Here we go. It's 10 8 10, 6. Eight, Kathy has flopped six. the top pair, two Kathy tens. Beautiful for Kathy. Yuho has an open and straight draw, open however. And straight draw. He can catch a queen or a seven to make a straight, or catch a jack to make a bigger pair. Turn Look at this. And it's a queen. Man. Now this gives Kathy the top two pairs. She has queens and tens. She can catch a queen or a ten and make a full house and still win. But right now. Yuha is a big favorite to win this hand and knock Kathy out. And he's, he's done he's it. He's going to do it, yes. Look at him up and Kathy at him. Poor Kathy just Kathy. shaking her head. Bad outdraw. She walks past us and out of the arena here, but she's feeling a little dejected. First of all, that he could call her. Second of all, that he outdrew her. And the friends from Finland have eliminated Kathy Liebert. My pick to win. Now let's go to Shauna, who is with Kathy. Great playing. Just tell us what happened. For some reason, he decided to call with a very weak hand, Jack-9 off suit, which uh, I'm actually very surprised he called with the hand that week, but I wasn't as lucky as him and didn't catch uh, my card on the river. I think she made a great move. She put him on a weak hand, which he had. He decided to gamble with that weak hand. And we have a break. It sure paid off for him. He's a massive chip leader now, playing heads up. We got a finished final here, Vince. You're watching the World Poker Tour. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. In poker, it's good to have multiple personalities. I'm always mixing up my play to keep people guessing. Who will I be this hand? Trapping Gus, who check raises your chips away? Aggressive Gus, who plays every hand no matter what? How I play is up to you. We play at FullTiltPoker.com. are gone. Two remain. Now, it's friend versus friend for a seat at today's final heads-up match. We're down to our final two players. Let's get back to the action. Well, Vince, we're down to a finish finish. <laughs> we sure are. Look at these guys. Well, they've got to be thrilled, and even whoever loses, they're really going to be thrilled for the other guy that both of them got this far to play heads-up in this match. This is a great achievement for them. Yuha Helpy and Auntie Tulivirda were lucky to discover their talent for poker. Their country, after all, isn't exactly known for its Friday night poker games. Not so many players play in Finland. I think 200, 300 players. Not so many. There is only one casino, which is two hour drive away from my home, which is pretty far. When Yuha taught his friend Auntie how to play, he did a very good job. Their first lesson was only three months ago, and now the teacher is going head-to-head -head with his student at the World Poker Tour's final table of the amateur division in Aruba. 
I didn't even believe it myself that I could have this good chance to win it, but that's what I want. I have to say that Juha is one of the best heads up player I've ever seen, so it's going to be really tough. Now, Antje's making a nice move here, I think. He wants to move around where he can look into his opponent's eyes a little bit better here. I like this. Now, you see that Juha wears glasses, but he also puts that little covering over it so that you don't see his eyes. A lot of poker players don't want you to see their eyeballs, so you can't get a tell on them. He's doing that. He does it quite well. Where's those sunglasses? Here we go. We're down to heads up poker. Juha has a massive chip lead at this point. It's going to be interesting to see if the teachers taught the people all they know, Vince. Well, Yuha looks at his hand. He has a king and a six of hearts. That's a pretty nice hand heads up. You've got to expect he's going to raise it. He takes his time, Yuha. I'll say one thing about Yuha. Yeah, he doesn't make mistakes because he rushes. He does take his time. He is calm. He is collected while he's playing. He did show some excitement when he knocked Kathy Liebert out of the tournament, but that's because he outdrew her. Ansi, very fidgety over there. He scratches a lot. He's Priced 100. Looks very concerned. Are you how's going to raise it? Sure he is. You how makes it 100,000. He's going all He's in. 100,000 and Nazi quickly moves all in over the top. He's got a pair of sevens. He's more. Well, I call anyway. I don't yeah, you call it okay. Here they go. Let's look at the showdown. We have a king six of hearts against two sevens. All right, let's see what happens. Yuha can become our champion on this hand if he gets lucky again. He's a big underdog again. Flop comes seven, eight, deuce. Well, he's got three of a kind. Flop comes eight, seven, deuce. He's flopped three sevens. He didn't even wince when he flopped the three sevens. He didn't even flinch. Next card. Next card to come off is a six. Yuha mucks his hand before they get to the river card, knowing it's no good no matter what comes Sixes off the deck. Ansi doubles up. Now, for the people out there that don't know, you see Ansi had less chips than Yuha. And when he said all in, he could only win what he lost, what he had in front of him. So Yuha just has to match whatever Ansi had. And that's exactly what he's doing. The rest of it goes back into Yuha's pile. You know, all these players are here today as guests of Ultimate Bet. If they were amateurs, they won the way. If they're professionals, they were invited, Mike. Their slogan is, where virtually everyone plays poker. Once you're here in Aruba, you can sail the crystal clear Caribbean waters. If you're a poker player, though, to get here, you first had to surf the web. The Ultimate Poker Classic is sponsored by UltimateBet.com, an online poker room that allows anyone with an internet connection to log on and ante up. I used to like live action, but I love online poker. It's real fast and, and it's fun online, you get to chat. I can be working and playing at the same time. Online poker is one of the next great frontiers. I play an Ultimate Bet. I'm probably the most horrible online player in the world. But I love it. It's not surprising the pros pull up a chair at Ultimate Bet's virtual table. After all, they helped design the site. Where else in the world can we sit down and play for play money with Phil Hellmuth Jr. or play 25 cent, 50 cent pot limit game with Devilfish? You just can't do it. To keep the good times rolling, Ultimate Bet flew 80 online competitors, all expenses paid, to Aruba. For some fun in the sun, And to spice up the mix, UB also brought eight of the finest professional players to Aruba to give some advice and maybe teach a lesson when the top pro goes heads up against the online champ. Whoever comes out victorious wins a $25,000 seat in the World Poker Tour Championship and a chance to be named the best poker player alive. Everyone else just gets a tan. How sweet it is. One day you're playing online, battling it out, and the next year you're in Aruba playing against the world champs. At this stage, Yuha still has about a two to one chip lead over his pupil. These guys look serious though. They're playing hard at each other. When you went all in. Look at this. They're talking a little strategy yeah, here just between each other. Acting yeah. very casual yeah. considering what's at stake. Look at this. Yuha 
has a jack ace. That's a pretty strong hand, heads up. Likes his hand. That's a good hand, heads up. You gotta figure he's gonna raise this. Right, 60, there he goes. 60, How much? 60, he bets 90,000. He's raised at 60,000. The two friends going at each other. Very playable hand. He's got oh. that miserable look, but he's calling oh. with a call nine king in his hand. Auntie's going to call it. So right now we have 186,000 in the pot. This is a huge, huge pot here. Don't go away. The action's heating up on the World Poker Tour. We'll be right back. Yuha Helpy from Finland is locked in a high-stakes battle with his best student, Ansi, as the last two amateurs clash to determine who will take on the winner of the Pro Division for the Ultimate Poker Classic title. Looks like we have a big pot going here, Vance. Let's get back to the action. We have the King-9 versus the Ace-Jack. Right now, Yuha has the best hand. Let's see what flops out there. Whoa, look at this flop. Oh, nine, nine, five. Nine, nine, five. Surprise, surprise for Ansi. Oh, this is a gin for Ansi here. Oh, he's checking it. He should check. Very I would have checked also. He's trapping. He's sandbagging. I would have checked also. You how raised before the flop. Normally people that raise before the flop bet after the flop. Bet. And look at Ansi looking straight ahead. Now he's looking back down to ensure himself what he's got. Yuha's only bet 50,000 here. Now that's a very peanut little bet. I'm all in. Ansi has moved all in over the top. It's a raise of about 200,000. So Yuha was either trying to just to pick this pot up cheap. Ansi came back over the top for all his money. Another check raised by Ansi. It looks to me like the pupil starting to teach the teacher a little bit about the game, Vince. Well, he's certainly an actor. His body language tells you that he's weak. You know, bet into me, I'll fold. That's what he's, he's telling his opponent. But uh, then he comes right over the top. Yuha folds. Sure enough, Yuha right. throws his hand away. And Ansi shows him a nine. He, he shows him nine. a nine. It looks to me like the student is uh, teasing the teacher here a little bit. So, okay. You know, he's trying to put him on tilt or something, showing him a card like that. You know? Well... I'm not sure that's a wise move on his part. I think you're better off not to show him any cards. You're needling, and you want to get a player to be upset. Yeah, we'll look at him. I think he succeeded. To about 460,000, roughly. You can't beat me. You can't beat me. No, 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 it's a cat. Well, they're laughing, they're joking around. <laughs> now let's go down to Shauna, who's with Russ Hamilton. Russ, you're a great world champion. What do you think about this? I think it's great for poker. You've got one guy that's only been playing for three months. The other guy's been playing for three years. He's taught his friend to play. I've played poker with both of them. They're both excellent players. And for someone that's just learned three months ago, he's playing very well. Okay, with that last pot, Ansi has come up to virtually put himself in a tie in the chip position. It's a pretty heads-up match. Tough match right it's now. It's a great match. It's got to be exciting for both players. Yuha's looking at his hand. Look at it. He's just picked up a big hand, though. He just picked up ace-king. And obviously, heads up. That's a very strong hand. Raise to 80,000. There you go. Big raise. Makes it up to 80,000. Made it 80,000 to go. It's 50 more thousand to Ansi. A $50,000 raise? Look at Ansi. Ansi has picked up a monster hand himself, an ace-queen offsuit. And he's moved all in he's with his chips. <laughs> okay, he's putting it all the line. Little does he know that he's a big underdog. He's put it all in, $470,000. Call. And he's been called. And the teacher calls him. Let's see the hands. They are both, they are all in ace-king. And Ansi lets out a deep sigh of frustration. He is sick to see the teacher have ace-king. He knows he's a major underdog now, and he's got to get very lucky. Look at him. He's hiding his face. 
I don't really fault him for making that play heads up with an ace queen, however. Okay, let's get lucky. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, it's a dream situation for you, huh? He has an ace king against ace queen. Well, I tell you, I think Anzi's played fantastic poker against him. He sort of outplayed him until this pot. Yuha has more chips than Anzi at this point. If Yuha does wind up winning this hand, the match will be over. However, if Anzi gets lucky and outdraws Yuha and wins the hand, Yuha will still have a few chips left. This hand will determine your winner, that's for sure. With ace king against ace queen. All right. Okay, let's see the flop. Here we go. And then we'll hold up. He's pointing at him. I'm going to outdraw you, he says. Let's see if he does. Flop comes King Jack 8. That's big for you, how with the Kings. Well, it's big, but it also gives a straight draw to Otzi. So if a 10 comes off, he will win. It's a 3. It's a 3. Otzi is going to need a 10. Down to one card. Or the teacher is going to win this tournament. It's a 6. The teacher stands up. He's excited. You has done it. First place winner today. Congratulations. Ansi, <laughs> kidding around, shakes his hand. Very close finish. They give Very each other a hug. Finish. This is Yuha Helpy, our champion from Helsinki, Finland. Now, well, he's the coach. You know, he's, he should win this. The the now, Yuha's going to get to watch the pro division and the see who he's going to play for that precious seat in the World Poker Tour Championship final. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. about to get underway in the pro division of the ultimate poker classic for the greatest players in the world this is going to be an exciting poker event for the great pros are coming out right now they're playing for 250,000 winner take all the winner here will meet our amateur champion from Finland to battle for that seat in the world poker tour championship yeah good old Yuha sitting on the sideline he has done it he gets to watch four legendary players of the poker world battle it out for a shot at him. And he's young, he's fearless, he's got 50,000 in his pocket. The pros expected to beat the amateur, but I think they're gonna have their hands full with him. We're in the Pro Division Championship of the Ultimate Poker Classic. Let's get to the table and see the action. Shuffle up and deal. You are gonna see championship poker at its finest today. Our chip leader on the pro side is former world champion Phil Helmuth. Now, Vince, if you said that Phil had won a million tournaments, he'd say you're underestimating. He's very confident, a very aggressive player. He's starting out today with 30,000 in chips. Okay, now Phil Gordon has the next biggest stack with 20,000. This guy sold his technology company in the late 90s, and he's been playing in the biggest games ever since. In seat one, another former world champion and a tournament superstar, Scotty Wynn. Scotty's starting out today with 15,000 in and chips. And finally, Jennifer Harmon is also a multiple title holder, but she's most feared for crushing big-time opponents in cash games. She's got the short stack with 14,000. First hand action is underway. The action will be on Scotty Wynn, former world champion. He mucks, and Phil Helmuth folds, and Phil Gordon, he has a king deuce, he folds. Jennifer Harmon gets a ground skinner. Ground skinner means that, well, because she had the most money in, no one else contested, she's going to win that pot. She takes it, she's smiling, she's happy. You're always happy when they give it up to you, especially since she had a Jack-5 off suit. Vince, it's ladies first, Jennifer Harmon, most considered to be the greatest woman poker player in the world, and some think she's the best poker player in the world. Jennifer, when she comes over the top, she's got a hand, Vince. She's not one to Mickey Mouse around. This is a tough table. <laughs> There's a lot of stress involved. It's very mental. You want to win it, so that's what you try to do. I look for the two Phils to be the most aggressive players. They're not afraid to put their chips in the pot. I look for them to be the aggressors here today at this final. The action is on Phil Helmuth right here. And Phil's picked up an ace six off suit. An ace high in a four-handed game. I raise. And Phil's going to raise, it looks like. Well, you know, four-handed people out there saying, well, what, what, what could you possibly be raising with an ace-six-four? 
but in four-handed, you got to play much more aggressive. Now, this is interesting. Phil Gordon next to him has a real nice pair of jacks in his hand. Look at Phil Hammond looking at him. <laughs> How's he going to play it? He's going all in. He's going all in. He's picked up two jacks. He's played right over the top for all his money on hand number two right here against Phil Helmuth. He loves to play against Phil Helmuth. I mean, a few years ago, they were at the final table of the World Championship together. He was not intimidated by him then. I don't expect him to be intimidated by him today. Jennifer Harmon threw away an ace-queen, ordinarily a pretty strong hand. Right, Jennifer had ace-queen, but the pot was raised and re-raised all in. And Jennifer opted to throw the ace queen away. Scotty's going out now. It's between the two fills. How much is it? Twenty thousand. Should be twenty thousand even. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. And Phil Helmer throws his ace six off suit away. Phil Gordon picks up that pot. A real pair of jacks. That's pretty darn good. Phil Gordon wins the pot. Phil does have the nerve to come right over the top of Phil Helmer. Many times that puts Phil a little bit on tilt. Phil's a very aggressive player. He likes to raise and pick up lines and annies all the time. This is what Phil Helmer's style is. If Phil has one weakness in his game, is that he does get to steam it a little bit when people raise him over the top. There's definitely a zone there. If you make four or five mistakes, you're going to get eliminated. Sometimes all it takes is one mistake. But if you're doing everything right, it's a beautiful place to be. Huh? I had ace jack. Now, Phil Helmuth is a world champion, queen? but he's also a great trash talker. Maybe the world champion in trash talk. Awesome People either love him or hate him. Controversial oh, figure in the poker world. Jennifer looks at a 6-4 and folds her hand. Yep. And now it's on Scotty. Now, Scotty hasn't gotten involved in a pot yet. You had two monsters. And he's going to raise, it looks like, on the button here. He doesn't have much. Now, Scotty Wynn, he's I calling this hand. Yet, would I know? Scotty, he likes to talk trash, right too, but he's in there with another great one, Phil. Scotty comes in the pot for 2200 He's raised on the button. He's in favorable position, and Phil throws away a jack-10 offsuit, and Phil Gordon has a 7-9 of hearts, a hand you like to play. He throws it away. Scotty Wynn wins the putt. Scotty Wynn doesn't have to yeah, show his hand, yeah, but, you yeah, know, yeah. he made a good raise. He took the pot without having to show them. He took the pot down. So Scotty Wynn, a truly great, great poker player. Well, he's quite a character. He's a world champion. He's very feared here. It's good to see him out here in the sunshine. Sometimes it's tough for uh, us to play against people you don't know. You made a wrong move, you're so embarrassed. Oh, no! That's poker. Phil Gordon opens the pot for 1900 I noticed that uh, Phil Gordon just turned his chair around. He does this all the time when he plays poker. It's just more comfortable for him to turn around and play like this. He likes to cross his arms on the chair. Maybe it's easier for him to push his chips in that way. I don't know, but uh, he likes to get him in there. I know that. Phil Gordon is not afraid. He has very competitive blood. He likes to compete at everything. He's a sportsman. So he's here to win this thing. Make no mistake about it. He's not playing for second place. I felt like an underdog going into today. I'm going to play steady poker. I'm going to try to turn over the best hand as often as I can, and I'm going to hope to catch some cards. It's forehand. Anything can happen. A lot of amateur poker players are in the crowd today, eagerly watching this match. They know that the amateur winner, Yuha, will get to play the winner. They cherish those opportunities, you know what I mean? It's like getting to play against a Tiger Woods or a Michael Jordan. In the poker world, it can really happen. I can relate to the tennis okay. world. It's like taking the top college player in tennis and giving him a shot of Pete Sampras. Here comes Jennifer Harmon. Now, she's raising in first position Jennifer with a King 7. King 7 of diamonds. She comes in for 1,700. Total of 1,700. Well, Scotty has a King 6 mm. offshoot and fold, yeah, and Phil Scotty folds Jack 9. Fold. Now, here's Phil Gordon in the big blind. He's going to call another 1,100 with a Queen 5 of clubs. Phil calls well, That's a pretty amazing more. call with a Queen 5 out of position. Not sure I like that call. Flop comes king, queen, what seven. What a flop for Jennifer. Suits. Flop has come king, queen, seven. King, queen, seven. Jennifer's flopped two pair. Phil Gordon's flopped a second pair, and he leads out and bets 2,100. Phil Gordon bets 2,100. Well, Jennifer's doing her little acting job here, little Jane Fonda. She's going for the Oscar. Yeah, look at her. She's so excited, <laughs> deep down. <laughs> Flop two pair, have some sucker on your right betting into you. I'm all in. 
She's gone all in. There she goes. She's gone over the top. She's not going to let him catch any cards to outdraw her. Gordon at bet 2100, and Jennifer is raising all in. Now, Phil Gordon has a second pair with a bad kicker. I can't see him calling this. It's going to cost him another 7000 or so. Phil gave it a shot. Second best pair. But he's got to give this up. You would think, yeah, he's going to do it. And he does. He shows her the queen. He lays his hand down. Jennifer Harmon flopped two pairs. She raised an early position with a king seven. Got a nice flop. Won a good pot. Hey, hey no clapping for her. Well, Jennifer cracks a smile as she picked up a nice little pot there. How great is it to, to stack your chips to rake in a nice winning pot? All poker players love to stack chips. So that's what 1,700 means. 1,800 means you're going to let it go on the flop. 1,700 means you're going all the way with it. All right. You've got to hand it to Phil. He knew that Jennifer wasn't bluffing. I just wanted to find out and what speaking of bluffing, was. Shauna has been out scouring the island for the art of the bluff. And bluffing in poker is an art. When people think of poker, the first thing they think of is bluffing. So let's get into this WPT Poker Corner, the art of the bluff. Bluffing is, you know, just like, if you don't bluff in poker, there is no poker. For the pros, a bluff doesn't work on just one level. To beat the best in the world, you have to play the game within the game. You look down at your hand to make sure you have that hand. They think, okay, she's double checking to make sure that she has the best hand and that she has the nuts. I'm gonna lay down my hand. So bluffing is obviously important, but being able to read bluffs is critical. You can tell by the speed they make their bet, if they look away, if they look at you. You can watch a man's facial expression, the way he pushes in at chips. Mostly it's body language. Poker pros think they're good at identifying bluffs because they're watching every little movement. But you can't always trust what you see. When I'm not bluffing, I'm real still. I try to act nervous. I try to swallow that kind of stuff to get them to call me. And all I'm saying in my head is call, 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 please call. <laughs> Winning players know you sometimes have to bet, even when you have the worst hand. But there's another reason to do it. When you bluff big pot, you feel good. Action is on Scotty here. Doesn't have much of a hand. He's gonna throw it away like he should. Throws his hand away. Now here comes Phil Helmuth. He's raising with a queen six of diamonds on the button. He's in position. Phil Gordon beats him in the pot almost with the king queen. Look at this. You know, these guys have their own little private match race going on. Phil Gordon actually loves to play pots with Phil Helmuth. Most people shy away from him. Phil Gordon can't wait to get in there with him. Oh, wow, look at this flop. Flop is king, queen, three with two hearts. It's a great flop for Phil Gordon. He's flopped a top two pair. pair. Now it's a full house for Phil Gordon. A queen. Oh, this could spell trouble for Phil Helmuth. He has made three queens on the turn. <laughs> three queens for Phil Helmuth. Look at this. Phil has made three queens on the turn. Gordon's bet. He's bet 1,200. Phil Gordon's bet 1,200. And Phil Helmuth calls him. Just call him. He's got three queens. Two He's drawing dead. He doesn't know it. Last card. Four Last card off is the four clubs. Now, Phil Gordon is going to your acting school. He's trying to get an Oscar out of this. He's acting like he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't have much. When, in fact, he has a powerful hand. Queen's full of kings. He's got a monster, a huge hand. Now, how much can he get out of it? He's betting about 6,000, it looks like. Now, Phil Helmuth has three queens. He's looking at three hearts on the board. He's just saying, please call me, please call me. But he has trips. And he's going to call him. He has one of those little cars that has a ranking of hands on it. He's trying to act like he, what do I have, what do I have? The man's called me. Oh, no. Now he turns up the king, queen, and the full house. He's got queens full of kings. He slow rolled them. He slow rolled them a little bit. He's trying to act like, what do I have? Look, it's the hand rankings. <laughs> Phil Gordon with the absolute oh. rocks. So <laughs> plays with them here. Now there's a little gamesmanship here. Look now, now he's pitched the card over to Phil. Says maybe you need this worse than I do. <laughs> oh my golly. Well, I have to give Phil Helmuth a little bit of credit there for not losing any more money than he did with that pot for not raising with three queens there. He contained himself with three queens. That's a, that's a strong. You think you normally gonna have that hand? And he should have gone broke with that. That's amazing. That's all he lost in that pot. Good to defense by Phil Helmuth. You're watching Poker in Aruba. It doesn't get any better than this. We'll be right back. We 
You've been watching a battle between the two Phils as Phil Gordon stuck it to Phil Helmuth Jr. But Helmuth, poker's big mouth, could bite back at any time. The game is really heating up now, so let's get back to the action. Now, believe me, Phil is going to get a little frustrated by it. He's going to try to act cool here, but I think that uh, that little act that he put on there, like, what do I have in getting that card, is going to get to him here. Hey, I'm impressed with Phil Gordon. Look at this guy. He's loose. He's happy. He's making some great plays. Sits, you know, his chair backwards. Phil Gordon folded his hand. Now, Jennifer has an ace, deuce of diamonds. She's in position on the button. She comes in for 1700 Action is on Scotty. Scotty it. folds his hand. Now here comes Phil Helmuth. He's got a 9-8. Phil likes to see a lot of flops because he likes to outplay people after the flop. So he's called this raise out of the big blinds. Cost him another 1200 And we're going to have a flop. Flop comes 10, 8, 4. Now the eight, flop four, comes 10, 8, 4 with two diamonds. Now Jennifer has flopped the nut flush draw. The best possible hand if a diamond comes up there. Let's see what happens. Well, Helmuth has got the second best pair. He's got the pair of eights. It's kind of interesting. She's going now to that's check. Interesting. Phil has checked. JHT checks. And Jennifer has checked. Jennifer has checked the nut flush draw and made the flush. Look at this. The nine of diamonds has come on the turn, giving Jennifer the very best possible hand. It's also given Phil Helmuth two pair, nines and eights. The great thing about it is Phil Helmuth has to act first. It's on him, and he checks, and here goes Jennifer. Jennifer bets 2,000. He left? checks, and Jennifer bets 2,000, a very small bet with the very best hand possible. Phil is asking her how much she has left. Whoa. Well, you know, he, he didn't put her on four diamonds after the flop. Look at this. Now, Jennifer has about nine or 10,000 left. Phil wanted to know how much it was. He's made two pair on the turn. Phil Helmuth could be heading for white water here in his canoe. Jennifer bets 2,000. You know, Jennifer's doing a great acting job here. I mean, I feel like taking out my violin for her. You know, this is like, <laughs> this is sad sack here. <laughs> she's, she's got the rocks. Now, there's three diamonds out there, a possible straight out there. Phil Helmuth has two pair. Now, he knows it went check, check on the flop. Right, He's going. going. He's going all in. He's going to set Jennifer Harmon all in. She's going to make sure she's got the nuts again. Big trap time. She's going to break into a big smile here shortly. I can promise you that. She calls it. She's all in. All in. There she is. Look at Phil. <laughs> oh, no. Phil knows he has fumbled the ball here. Now, Phil's not dead. He can catch a 9 or an 8 and still win this pot. No. He doesn't. It's a 6 that comes off. Jennifer Harmon has doubled up. <laughs> You know, the key to that play was Jennifer checking the nut flush draw on the flop. There's not many players that would check that in that spot. I'm telling you, when the first person checks and you have the nut flush draw, you're going to bet on the flop in most cases. Jennifer checked right behind Phil. It turned out where it trapped him perfectly because he made two pair on the turn. She made the nut flush. Nice hand, Jennifer. A well-played hand by Jennifer. She has doubled up, and that hand has really hurt Phil Helmuth. Start digging the ditch because Phil Helmuth has just been buried. <laughs> The sun is shining on Jennifer in Aruba. Jennifer Harmon isn't just one of the best women poker players. She's one of the best, period. Jennifer has been playing and winning at cards for as long as she can remember. I was a baby when I started. I was 13. My dad used to have poker games, and when he got stuck and was losing money, he'd say, come on, Jennifer, get in this game, get me even. And I was 13 years old. So I'm in this game with all these people that I thought were 80. Of course, they're not that old, but I was 13, so I felt like I'm playing with these ancient guys, and I loved it. Since becoming a professional, the guys Jennifer plays poker with have gotten younger and better. It's a man's world. It always has been. Maybe it won't be in the future, but it is now. But some things never change. Jennifer is still a force to be reckoned with. Never mind woman poker player. I mean, Jennifer Harmon is probably the best woman side game player in the world. She's also won two world championships. She's a great player. What's in the cards for women in poker? Well, if Jennifer Harmon's success is any indication, then the future looks very sweet indeed. It's nice to be respected for all the hard work that you've done. So, of course, that makes you feel good. What I just try to do is be the best I can for me. Well, Jennifer's feeling good right now. She put the bait on the hook, and Phil Helmuth went for it, hook, line, and sinker. Oh, no. <laughs> Phil Helmuth being smacked around. 
Players really do like to beat him. There's no question about it. It's always nice to beat one play out of a pot, but when it's Phil Helmuth, it feels like you've won five pots. Can't Stay with us. The the players are going on a break. An exciting championship final at the Ultimate Poker Classic. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. to play with so play online at partypoker.com it's fun it's easy it's the world's largest poker room you fold it Jennifer Harmon laid the perfect trap for Phil Helmuth Jr., crippling the world champ. Now, Helmuth will need all of his skill and a lot of luck to get back on track. Let's get back to the action. Okay, the price of poker has gone up. The ante is now $100, and the blinds are $500 and $1,000. And what we're talking about, blinds, everyone in the poker world knows what an ante is. You've got to put up a few dollars. Blinds are the two bets left of the white button. That's the dealer button you got to put up a little something extra to keep the action going. They're called blinds because you have to put the money in the pot before you get your cards. Look at Jennifer. She's getting a little uh, Aruba drink here, looks like. Yeah. They're having a great time. They're drinking cocktails. By the way, Yuha is so excited they just spotted him hula dancing in front of the crab restaurant out front. Phil Gordon lays down the 10-7 of hearts. Look at this. Look at Jennifer on the button. She has picked up two aces, the very best hand possible okay, in poker. Okay, yes, that's the dream hand, the monster hand. Let's see if she can contain herself. And action, Jennifer. Now notice she just bet 2,000. It's the minimum raise. Now this is going to puzzle these guys. Scotty gets away from his hand. Now Phil Helmuth in the big blind has picked up a king-queen. That's a pretty good hand. He's got to try to figure it out here. Is he going to call? Now look at this. He's, he's suspicious about this raise. This is the very minimum raise possible. The blinds and has just went up, and all of a sudden she's making a petite, tiny little raise. Why only 2,000, Jen? He wants to know if this is a trap. We know why she's raised so little. She's got the best hand possible. Now Phil has a king and a queen here. I'll be surprised if he doesn't call another 1,000 with this just to try to see a flop, but he's wondering why would you raise such a little amount? And he really senses that this is a trap. It is indeed a trap. She's got the two aces, the pocket rockets, bullets, the best hand possible. She's got them. Is that what you call them, Mike? <laughs> All the above and more when you get them. Well, she's just doing a little prayer right now. It's the Jennifer prayer. Please call me, Phil. Please, please. Well, I'll be surprised if he doesn't call. He's got a king queen. I don't know how I can fold this hand. I would have moved in if he would open for more. <laughs> now, granted, he only has 7,500 left. But still, I'll be surprised if he throws this away before the flop for one more thousand. Well, I admire Phil. He senses this is a trap. Well, you know, it's been a rough day at the office for Phil. I mean, he's looking around. He can't ever seem to get settled here. Well, I can't fold, that's for sure. Close. Talking about moving in. He's called. If you beat me, if you bust me, you bust me, Jennifer. Good luck to you. Good luck to Jennifer, he says. He just called the other thousand. Flop comes five, five, Flop comes five, five, deuce. This flop certainly doesn't help Phil. Phil checks. And Jennifer's got the two aces, of course. And Phil checks. 5, 5, now here goes Jennifer. 5, She's betting 5,000 at this pot. I wouldn't have bet in that spot if I'd have been Jennifer. I mean, had Phil Helmuth had a pair there with this flop coming out there, he would have moved all his chips in in one second. He wouldn't have given her any free chances to beat him in the pot. He's short on chips. He wouldn't have been fooling around. In my view, there's no way Phil could have a pair there. I think Jennifer's overplayed this hand. I would have given Phil one free card there. I would have hoped he would have hit something before I would have bet. I might have bet on 4th Street. I certainly wouldn't have bet the flop after Phil checked. I would have given him a chance to hit a card. There's no card he can hit that can beat her. 
I think Jennifer's overplayed this hand a little bit. Let's see what Phil does. Oh. And he throws his hand away. Sure. Jennifer and Jennifer wins pot the pot. Well, Mike, it looks like a lot of poker players have come down to watch this match today. According to the New York Times, 50 million people play poker on a regular basis. And that's in the U.S. alone. I'm from Houston, Texas, but I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Palo Alto, California. I'm from England. South Daytona, Florida. Detroit, Michigan area. I'm from Italy. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. From uh, Stockholm, Sweden. You might think everyone who plays poker is a cigar-smoking good old boy named Cowboy Wilford or Amarillo Slim. You think you know the type, or do you? What do you do for a living? I'm a prosecuting attorney. I'm currently a student. Building contractor. Graphic designer slash proofreader. I design websites. I'm in sales. So, now you know. The guy with the pinky ring and the cowboy hat is probably a lawyer. A real poker player looks like this. There's always the exception. My name is Mickey Joe Casey. I'm from Hooks, Texas, and I play a little poker for a living. Oh, that last pot, Jennifer took the lead. She has a slight lead over Phil Gordon. There are two chip leaders. Scotty's in third place, and Phil is down to about the cloth here. Well, the action's on Scotty. He picks up Queen Jack offsuit, and he comes in for 2,500. And here goes Phil Vance. He's going all in. He's got Ace Eight offsuit. He throws in his last 1,800. Yeah, I guess he has to take a stand here. Phil Gordon going out. Jennifer going out. So we're down to the two world champions. Scotty has Queen Jack. Phil has Ace Eight offsuit. Phil's about a dollar fifty cent favorite here. Here comes the flop. The flop is 10 8 4. Now this gives Phil a pair of eights. However, Scotty can win the pot if a nine, a jack, or a queen comes off. Not a bad flop for Phil Helmuth. Not bad, but Scotty has a lot of cards to win. A 10 comes on the turn, no help. Still looking good for Phil, here we go, last card. He's got to dodge a nine, jack, or a queen. He's done it. Yeah. A deuce comes at the river, Phil Helmuth doubles up. He's temporarily off the respirator. Absolutely. He's still alive. You're watching one of the best, very, very best in the world, play great, great defense. Phil Helmuth has a reputation in the poker world for being maybe the best no-limit hold'em player alive. But that's not all he's known for. I have a reputation um, for being a, a bit of a baby at the table sometimes. I'm not very entertained by your discussion, either call clock or shut up. And I've definitely lived up to that reputation. What are you doing to me when I'm in the middle of a pot? Tell me what that is. You're not out of line? You started it, not me. I just don't like hearing all this BS in the background. I'm trying to think. Well, I have a right. I'm not doing anything okay, wrong. Okay, let's stop it now, eh? I mean, I'm a competitive guy. I like to win, you know? Sometimes I don't take losing with the class that I should. My self-esteem probably wasn't as high as it should have been coming out of high school. In order to make that transition from low self-esteem at age 18 to world champion of poker, I had to develop a big ego. This last year, I've really made some major steps towards not doing that. It's something I'm working really hard on. These antics often overshadow an almost supernatural talent. Phil Helmuth is very instinctive. He feels people's cards, if that makes sense. Like he just knows when somebody doesn't have anything, knows when they do. Phil, he's good. That's the one I need to compete. Every t event, every tournament, wherever I go, that's the guy. With 18 years as a professional, over $5 million in career winnings, and the respect of his opponents, why can't Phil shake his other reputation? Maybe we'll find out when his autobiography hits the market. What's it called? The name of my autobiography is Poker Brat. Phil Helmuth is smiling again. He's built his chips up just a little bit now. He's got a little bit over 7,000. Well, that's a great lesson of survival. Phil Helmuth knows how to do it. He's been squirming. He's never felt comfortable today, but he's hanging in there. Well, the price of poker has gone up one more time. The antes are now $300, and the blinds are one and 2,000. Now, what that means for Phil Helmuth, who has 6,500, 
after he puts in the blinds and then he's only going to have 4,200 left. He can't get through one round, Vince. He's got to play a hand quick. Okay, so because of the money structure, he's a desperate man. The action is going to be on Phil Gordon. He's throwing his bad hand away, a three deuce. Now on Jennifer, was a queen four off suit. She can't play that. She throws it. Scotty says, I'm all in. He's going he goes all in with a jack ten. And Phil has the jack eight of hearts, and he's calling him. Look at this. He's going to call him with just a jack Well, he's only got four more thousand, Vince. Scotty has jack ten. Phil Helmuth has jack eight of hearts. They shake hands. They're going for the gusto. Scotty's the favorite. Jack ten over jack eight for Phil. Phil Helmuth is going to need some help. Jack 10 against Jack 8 of hearts. Let's look at the flop. Here it comes. The flop is 10. Oh, that's a good flop for Scotty. He sure is. Pair 10s. Phil Helmuth is okay. standing up. He knows he needs two runners to stay alive Turn in this tournament. A got a 9. Okay, There's one of them. He needs a 7 or a queen, Vince, to, to make a straight to stay alive in this tournament, or he's going to be out. Last card. No. Is a it's a Jack. Ten and Phil Helmuth, he former world yeah. champion, the chip leader at this final table, is the first one eliminated. He congratulates everybody, shakes everybody's hand. Wishes them all well. A good sport, Phil Helmuth. It's been a tough day for Phil. I thought he misplayed a hand early against Scotty. Jennifer Harmon set that big trap for him. You know what? He just didn't get the cards today. Don't go away. The action's heating up on the World Poker Tour. Well, Vince, Phil Helmuth is out. Shauna is with our fourth place finisher right now. Phil, it's kind of a shocker. You were a chip leader going in. What happened? I, I kind of kind of, kind of thought I would win today. I was, uh, I could have played a little better. I was a little unlucky in, in two hands, and that sometimes can make the difference. You know, I made two pair and Jennifer made a flush. And then I made three queens and Phil made queens full of kings. So they're all playing well, and, and I wish them all good luck. Back to you guys. The former world champion and my pick to win this tournament, Mr. Phil Helmuth, he is out. You are the kiss of death. <laughs> well, let's see how the other three fare. Phil Gordon is the first to act here. Now look at this. Whoa. Look at this. He's picked up a beautiful hand, pair of aces. The very best hand possible. Comes in for 4,500. He's got the pocket rockets. Jennifer has a king eight of clubs. Two suited cards. Is she going to play it after those aces? Calling a raise with a king eight out of position is normally not her style. I'll be surprised if she calls this. She throws her hand away. And now here comes Scotty Wynn. Now Scotty's picked up a king jack off suit. Not a bad hand. Does he want to play this hand? It looks like he's going to. He's raising. Scotty is raising. He is going to set Phil Gordon all in, and Phil's going to jump out of his seat. He's going to order another pina colada because he's got two aces. He's really going to be happy about this. I'm all in. Oh, it's a beautiful feeling. He, he loves this raise, and now he's going all in quickly with his Phil aces. Scotty's got King Jack off He's all in. It's King Jack versus two aces here. Phil Gordon is feeling good right now. Scotty Wynn is really going up a mountain this time. Here comes our flop ace, 490. Flop three aces. It's got to come a queen and a ten for Scotty to win this pot. <laughs> the queen came. <laughs> hey, who knows? He catches the 10, he can win this pot. What a beat this would be. You got to kiss me. Scotty's up on it from his seat. He's also got a diamond draw. He has a flush draw also. That's right. Whoa, a lot of outs here for Scotty. Phil cracking his neck a little bit there. <laughs> this would be something. He doesn't do it. Phil Gordon doubles up, and it seems only fitting since he had two aces. Phil Gordon does a lot of things. He's a bridge expert. He's a jazz pianist. The guy retired when he's 27 years old. It's a very unique character. Phil Gordon is a regular guy. If by regular, you mean sort of friendly. <laughs> Taller than most. I'm six foot nine. Somewhat traveled. I traveled through 60 countries, third world on all the continents. A bit smarter than most. Graduated from Georgia Tech with a computer science degree when I was 20. 
He's brilliant. He's unbelievable mathematician. Can figure out things in seconds. Very smart. Maybe with a little bit of money. I got a job in California working for some high technology companies. Four of my coworkers asked me to join them in a startup company in 1992. So I left my job and went to work with them. We built a very successful network management software company and eventually sold it to Cisco, which in 1996 was a very, very good deal for me. And he's even humble. I still don't know why Phil Gordon got invited to this pro event, but happy to be here. Like I said, just like you and me. After all, which of us couldn't stand on a fairway 80 yards from the pin with $500 riding on one throw and do this? Go in! Just another day in the regular life of a regular guy, Phil Gordon. Well, Phil started at him with 13,000, so Scotty loses 13,000 out of his stack, which is going to drop him down to about 10,000 and double Phil up to nearly 28,000. Now, Scotty had a few more chips than Phil. Table stakes, you can only lose as much as you have in front of you. Therefore, he can only lose as much as Phil had. So this is going to cripple Scotty still. That was a serious blow he took there. Jennifer is our chip leader. Phil Gordon's not far behind her, and Scotty is a distant third. Action is on Scotty here. Now Scotty looks down and picks up the 5 4 hearts. Now he's on the short stack, but this is not a great hand at all. He's injured badly here. He's got to make a stand. He may go for the bluff. When he stacks them up like this, they usually go in. 10,400. And he says yes. They go all in the pot. He's going all in. Scotty has gone all in. Believe me, he wants to pick up the pot with his hand. He doesn't want to get played with. He has a five high. Jennifer standing up because she has a pretty decent hand. Bill Gordon passes her a drink. He says, take a swig of this. You might call him. She's got a dilemma. Now, Jennifer's our chip leader with over 40,000. Does she want to jeopardize over 12,000 of her chips with this marginal hand, with a king 10? And double Scotty up, making him even a demon at the table. This is her dilemma. Is he putting a move on? Is he a desperado? Is he a desperate character? She's got to analyze this. This is what poker's all about. You got to make these decisions over and over in these championship events. Here she goes. She is called. He's doing it. She doesn't believe him. Give her credit. She's picked him off. Scotty, even Scotty smiles. He's laughing. He knows that she's called him. They're turning the cards over. Scotty's sick. She has king 10. What a call by Jennifer here. Scotty has 5 4. Here comes the flop. Ace 8 4. Scotty has made a pair. Scotty is now the favorite to win this hand. Queen on a turn. Next card. Well, it's a queen. It gives her more outs. She can win this pot with a king, a jack, or a 10. The river card is going to be. River card is. It's a seven. a seven. Scotty wins a pot with two fours. Well done. Scotty Wynn, who was trying to bluff that pot, got lucky. He made a pair. It held up. He defeated Jennifer Harmon. He has doubled up, and we got a horse race. All three players now have about the same amount of chips. What a match. Vince, that was some call by Jennifer. Would you have made that call with the King-10? Well, you know something? She's saying, hey, I'm not going to be a doormat here. Okay, I don't believe you. I'm calling it. And she, it was instinct, and it was a good instinct, too. It sure was. She hit the nail right on the head. She got unlucky not to win the pot, but she made the correct decision. That's what poker's all about, Vince, making correct decisions. So you back to keep leading now, 20? 30, 30, 20. Scott is feeling pretty good here, and we've got a battle. And look at this. Phil Gordon picks up a real hand, a pair of tens. And he bets 10,000. Phil Gordon opens the pot for 10,000. He opens for 10,000. Jennifer had a junk hand, 3 5 off suit, throws she it folds. away. Now look at Scotty. Now he just won the last pot and he's picked up an ace high here. He's got ace eight off suit. Well, he's feeling his Wheaties. He's Still going all in and Phil calls He goes all in and Phil beat him in the pot. Now Scotty has overplayed this hand in my opinion. He got a little bit too anxious with the ace eight off suit. That's not really a premium hand, especially when a guy's bet 10,000 in front of you. Scotty's playing it though. Scotty better get an ace seven, here. Flop. flop is nine seven tree. Scotty can backdoor straight or catch Scotty an ace. An Otherwise, ace he's going to be our third place finisher. Yeah. Scotty wins down to one card. He has got to catch an ace or he's going to be out in third place. 
It's over. It's a seven. It doesn't come. Phil Gordon has knocked Scotty Wynn out of this tournament. Scotty Wynn, the great champion, a gentleman shaking everybody's hand. He's heading toward the bar, Vince. Scotty. <laughs> Might have to sell a couple of those gold chains now to get back to the States. But you know something? He's getting some nice consoling with the other losers. You know, when you lose, it's always nice to see other players that have been knocked out of a tournament. They always seem to be around when you lose. We see Russ Hamilton and Andy Duke consoling him out there. Scotty Wynn, always a tough man to beat, becomes our second world champion to be eliminated from the pro side. Scotty, great playing. What happened? There's nothing they can do to do there, you know. I always do that. At the end, I always screwed up some way, somehow. I just, I just find a way to screw up, just like my life, you know? Good effort. He's a gentleman. But we're watching Phil Gordon now go up against Jennifer Harmon. A fantastic match. Just a beautiful breeze, a beautiful ocean in Aruba. Championship poker. Fantastic day. Now it's down to six foot nine inch Phil Gordon and five foot two inch Jennifer Harmon. But like they say, Vince, size isn't everything. <laughs> Except for when it comes to chips. Phil Gordon almost has a 3-1 to one lead now over Jennifer Harmon. One of these two will play our amateur side winner from Helsinki, Finland, Juha Helpi, to determine who gets that seat in the prestigious World Poker Tour Final Championship Phil event. Look at this. Phil limps in with ace-queen here. He's got a big hand playing heads up. Here she goes. She's picked up two sixes and she's moved in. And Phil quickly calls her. He's quickly called. It's ace queen versus two sixes. We could have a champion here. If indeed Phil Gordon knocks out Jennifer Harmon, he will be our champion of the pro invitational of the ultimate poker classic. Hold up. The flop comes queen. Flop comes queen seven, eight. That's huge for Phil. It's huge for Phil. He's flopped the top pair. Jennifer's going to need to catch a six or two running cards to make a straight. Otherwise, she is going to finish in the runner-up position. And eight, Jennifer now has a two-outer. She has got to catch a six, or Phil Gordon will be our champion. There it is. Phil Gordon's done it. Phil Gordon has done it. He's picked up 250000 He's won the Pro Celebrity Invitational of the Ultimate Poker Classic. Congratulations to Phil Gordon. He gives her a nice hug. So, She's smiling. Down, Phil played very well today. A big score for Phil. He has done it. Knocking out these eight players. What a final table this was. Phil Gordon, the noted underdog. He got lucky catching the queen. It held up. He's done it. He's going after you, huh? Jennifer Harmon, our runner-up. The little lady is going to have to come back Phil again Gordon to try to win on the World Poker Tour. And now let's go over to Shauna, who's with our lucky winner. Bill, you said you didn't belong at this table. What do you think now? I still don't belong at that table. That's the toughest, that's the toughest eight players I've ever seen in my life. I mean, every single one of them played absolutely spectacular poker the whole way. Um, Dan, Phil Helmuth had me read like a book. Everything he said at the table, every time I made a move, he knew exactly what my cards were. I just, I, I was in awe of that. He got a little unlucky to go broke. Um, I was happy when he did, of course. It was my week. It was my week. So we're going to see a final coming up against Yuha and Phil Gordon. That should be spectacular because there's two lucky guys, two guys brimming with confidence. It's going to be very, very exciting. Now it's down to David versus Goliath. Which one will take the fall? Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Only one overall champion. Now, amateur Yuha Helpy faces down a tall order, a very tall order. The fighting Finn wants to bust Phil Gordon down to size. Well, we're down to our final two event winners. From the professional division, we have Phil Gordon. And from the amateur division, we have Yuha Helpy from Helsinki, Finland. Professional. Amateur, American, Finn. Computer Wiz versus In Your Face Pro. This island isn't big enough for both. 
Go! These two will compete at anything. And I do mean anything. Some people are just naturally competitive. I got you now. Hey! That's there you good. go! Now get used to that feeling. Five to one. How much more of a beating do you want? <laughs> These guys are merciless. There's only one way to settle this grudge match and determine who's the ultimate winner of the Ultimate Poker Classic. Shuffle up and deal. Okay, Vance, here we go. Oh boy, look at this. Huh? This is a beautiful thing to see, sort of. Oh, please, let it go back in the water, Vince. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Where are the mermaids? You know, we asked for two mermaids, oh, not this. <laughs> <laughs> look at this, here comes the prize money and the bikini clad beauties. The big money coming in. The big money from a big man. All right, they're opening the treasure test. See what they're playing for. Wow, look what's inside, Mike. Yes, it's the $25,000 entry into the World Poker Tour Championship event at Bellagio. Now that is a nice treasure. The winner of this event will get a seat in that tournament. Events, that tournament will be worth millions of dollars in prize money. One of these guys can become potentially a millionaire from this so it should be quite a battle. Congratulations to both of these players for making it this far in this championship. Yuha qualified online on Ultimate Bet to get here. He beat out 100 players on the amateur side to get an opportunity to play heads up to determine who will be the Ultimate Poker Classic champion. And here we go, Vince. First hands underway. Yuha making a move already. Makes it a buck and a half, 150. Blinds are just 25 and 50. Now they're starting with $10,000 in chips apiece, Vince. Phil's looking at his hand. Doesn't have much of a hand. He looks like he's going to throw. Yeah, he's going to throw this hand away. Yuha. At least I won one hand. You're going to win a lot of hands, my friend. Well, they're both happy to be here, vying for this title. I think there's a lot more pressure on Phil Gordon than there is Yuha. He's expected to win this competition. All his peers that he just knocked out are saying, get in there and beat this guy. He's an amateur. Don't make us look bad. I think the pressure is on Phil Gordon here. But if he lets this amateur beat him, he knows the kind of needling he's going to take. Grace. There's Phil Gordon. He comes in for 150 on the button with a king 10 off suit. False. Now notice you has picked up two threes here and he calls the other hundred. He doesn't raise back with a small pair. He wants to see the flop. And the flop comes king 710. Yu has got to be a little discouraged. He wished he probably would have re-raised before the flop. Gotten Phil out. Now Phil's got a real hand. But Yu Ha. Now notice Yu He's coming out and betting 200. Now Phil Gordon has the top two pair here. He's got kings and tens. This is a great flop for him. Let's see how he plays it here. Is he just going to call or is he going to raise him? Well, he's pretending like he's thinking, you know. We know what he's going to do. He's going to raise it. He raised it. He made it 900 to go. Is Yuha going to bite? It's tough to call this because you only got that pair of threes. It's impossible. He should have raised before the flop. He did it backwards. Impossible to call. You cannot call with two threes there. He throws his hand away. Phil Gordon picks up the pot. Well, they're just sparring right now. We haven't seen anybody even try to make a knockout blow here yet. Yuho's on the button here. He picks up a nice hand. He's got ace-ten of hearts on the button. He raises it, makes it 150 to go. What the heck is this? Re-raise. He's re-raising with the re six offsuit. Now, this is a horrible hand. He's just trying to make a play and win this pot right here. Stone Cold Bluff. Whoa, some surprising developments here. Absolutely. And Yuha calls him. He puts 500 more in. Now he's got a hand with ace 10 of hearts. Mike, these guys are really going at it here. Don't go away. The action's heating up on the World Poker Tour.
It's a battle of David and Goliath proportions, and this time the cards appear to be on David's side. Okay, we've got Phil bluffing with nothing. A six deuce against Yu Ha with the real hand, and ace ten. Let's see the flop. Flop comes queen seven tray, two diamonds. Flop comes queen seven three. And here comes Phil Gordon leading out of the pot with absolutely nothing. He's bet 650 into this pot. Now that, that flop helped neither player, but Phil is going with that bluff still. Duha has a very strong look, like a Terminator. He is emotionless, this guy. He looks like an iceberg in Finland to me. Look at this. He's going to play this hand. Remember now, we know Phil Gordon has nothing, but he doesn't know it. Oh, he has an ace-10. The flop is queen-7-3. Right. He raises this pot. He has bet 1,500 into this pot. Queen, seven, tray, two diamonds. Now, Phil Gordon has tried to win this pot twice. He re-raised him and let out and bet on the flop. When it comes queen-7-3, Phil Gordon just has a deuce-six offsuit. Now, there's no way he can continue to play this pot, in my opinion. But I am wowed by you house play here. Yeah, I love this play. This is very strong by Yuha. He must have picked up on some tell of Phil Gordon, and he is going to throw it away. Phil Gordon throws that hand away. What a play by Yuha there. Okay, Phil is on position this time. He's got the button. He looks down and finds the 4-7 of spade, and he just calls. He wants to see a flop with that hand. And now Yuha has picked up the ace-6 of diamonds. And he's going to raise it. Raise. He raises it just 150. I like these small raises he makes. And Phil beats him in the pot. He calls it. We're going to see a flop. Here comes the flop. Queen, 10, deuce, but with two spades. Now, Phil Gordon has flopped a flush draw. Yuha still has the ace high. Yuha is going to lead out and bet. $350. This has got to be exciting for... Phil. He's got four to the spade flush. He's doing a little acting here. Of course, he's going to call this, maybe even raise. He's just a reluctant call. He calls the 350. Okay, here comes the turn card. The king of hearts. Now, this is no help to either player. Now, look at Yuha. Yuha only has an ace high here now. He's raised it and got called. He's betting he's got called. And he's reaching back for a stack again. Now, believe me, this is not easy to do when you've raised it twice and your opponent has called twice and the board shows king, queen, ten, deuce, and you don't have any of that. 11, and he leads out and he bets $1,100. $1, Phil, actually disappointed. What's he going to do? Okay, brother. He's calling. Call. Phil Call. Gordon has called with his flush draw. Eleven $1 hundred dollars. Last time. About a three thousand dollar pot to river cards a tray. Last card off is a three of diamonds. Oh, it's a big bust for Phil. Now neither player have anything. He's going back to a stack. You have bets twenty five hundred. 2,500 he's betting. He just has ace high. Wow. And Phil Gordon throws his cards away. Oh, yeah. How do you spell relief like for Yuha? Now, Yuha had the best hand, but sure. he sure didn't know it. And to bet into that kind of board when a man's called you twice takes a lot of heart. This guy's an amateur? <laughs> <laughs> Phil Gordon takes a swig of water. I think he needs to go back to his pina coladas, Vince. <laughs> yeah, well, he's getting uh, pushed around here a little bit by Yuha, who's outplaying him at this point. Well, with that pot... Yuha has about 13,000 in chips and fills down to about 7,000. Okay, Yuha looks down. He finds an ace seven offsuit on the button. Now, just like he did last time, he raised with an ace six last time. He's definitely going up. He's raising. He raised it. He makes it 150 to go. And look at this. Phil Gordon calls another 100 with a 10-5 offsuit. I can't believe he's making this play. This is a frustration call. The flop comes ace queen nine. Phil checks. You have bets 300, and look at this. Phil Gordon is raising this pot. Phil Gordon has made it a thousand straight. He's raised it 700 more with a 10-5 offsuit on a total steal. He's getting a little nutty here, but it could be frustration. But you know, 
this play wouldn't be that horrible if the other guy didn't have an ace. He happened to catch top pair with an ace. Well, you was raising him back. He's making a 2,000. 2,000. He's pushing him right out of this. Now, look what he's done here. He raised him back one more 1,000. Now, that's a great play by Yuha right there. Phil shakes his head. What would Mike Sexton do? What would you do? <laughs> well, I probably wouldn't have called with a 10-5 off suit to start with. <laughs> It's kind of like that, that tortured look you get when you, everything goes wrong. Well, you can look at him. Look at his face. He looks tortured right now. I guarantee he feels like a puppet on a string, and Yuha is the puppet master. What a play by Yuha in this hand. All right, bro. I mean, Phil Gordon keeps trying to steal oh, these pots. You make that 3,000, I push all in. Ooh, big talk by Phil. Very big talk, especially with that hand. Right. Well, he's there just talking. If he pushed it all in there, he'd really you be gambling because he had nothing. Phil Gordon is getting frustrated here. This so-called amateur sure doesn't look like any amateur. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Think you know poker? Try this one on for size. I'm all in. Dude, that's my soup. Absolutepoker.com. You in? The fighting fin is getting under Phil's skin. Can amateur division winner Yuha Helpy seal the deal against pro champ Phil Gordon? Now, the battle continues. And we're ready. So far, we're seeing a one man show here, Vince. Gotta give the guy from Finland credit. He's jumped out to a nice lead, and he's playing very controlled, very confident poker. You know, I don't think Phil Gordon's having quite the same amount of fun as he was. <laughs> he feels like he's sparring with Mike Tyson right now, I promise you. I mean, I feel for Phil Gordon. Look at that face. You know, I've seen happier faces at the dentist office. He's <laughs> disgruntled. His face is getting redder and redder. You know, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> we are in beautiful Aruba. The sun is out. But you know what? I think the humidity has been getting to Phil. His color has changed his face a couple times today. I guarantee his confidence level has changed. That's for sure. He feels like he's in about round 29 of a heavyweight championship fight right now. Well, here he has an eight and a six, different suits, off suit. Phil raises to two. And Yuha has big slick, a gigantic hand, ace king of diamonds. Yuha's going to re raise. Here comes Yuha. Phil has raised it $100, a mild raise. Yuha makes it 500 to go. Now Phil's got 8-6 off suit here. The flop comes ace-7-10. Now that means Phil Gordon has flopped a inside straight draw. He needs a nine for a straight. But Yuha has the aces with the king kicker. It's real strong. Powerful hand. Yuha, the action on him first. He's betting. Here comes Yuha. He's bet 1,300. Now look at this. Phil with a gut shot straight draw. He's going to raise it. He's bet 2,800. And, now and Yuha goes all in, in immediately, and now Phil knows he's duck soup. You had bet 1,300. You're a card rack, man. Looks like Phil made it about 2,600 approximately, and now Yuha moved all in. Bring these in. This is a crippling blow right here to Phil Gordon. Now, Phil Gordon only started this hand with 7,000. He called a $500 re-raise before, and now he's made it 28 more hundred to go. This is going to leave him with about 3,000 in chips. Boy, he doesn't like the way he's played this pot. He has really got Phil Gordon off stride right now. No, he's talking to himself, and he's, he's literally making gestures to the cards, like they're, they're talking back to him. Well, look how many times Phil Gordon has tried to re-raise him with no hand, and every time he does it, Yuha plays back at him again. It's like he knows he has no hand. 
It feels to force that smile, but you know, he, he's not very comfortable with himself right now. Now, in this case, Yuha knows he has a big hand. He's putting all the money in the pot right here because he does have a hand, but several times Yuha didn't have a hand, and he raised him back anyway, and Phil laid the hand down. Ready for a drink. Right now they're toasting each other. Yuha says, let's have a toast. <laughs> That feels a little bit better. Phil Gordon's trying to cool off a little bit here. Right now he's steaming. He right, pours the drink down. over his head. He says, take the pot. Phil says, take it down. I'm not calling. Guy's got Ace King every hand. What can I do? Well, he's drying himself off right now. Okay, Phil has about 3,200 now. Phil Gordon, give him credit. He keeps trying to make plays against him with no hands. And even when Yuha doesn't have a hand, he still plays back at Phil. Phil keeps pushing back at Yuha, making moves, but it's just not working. Yuha's not intimidated. Tell the other pros to get ready to throw me in the pool. Get ready to throw him in the pool. They had a little inner bet among themselves that whoever won the pro side, if they lose to the amateur, they're going to get dumped in the pool. I thought I was running good until I ran into this guy. But right now, if you just tuned in, you wouldn't know who the amateur was and who the pro was. Our David and Goliath match now. David has about... 17,500 chips. Goliath has about 2,500 in chips. This guy has no idea how lucky he got to get me instead of Phil Helmuth or Scotty Wynn or Jennifer Harmon or Annie Duke or Russ Hamilton. Uh, you beat them all. You must be better than them. Oh, yeah, much better than them. <laughs> Phil's down to $2,800. yuha has got over 17,000. All the momentum is going to Yuha. Poor Phil is sitting there. I've been a bit lucky. No, it's, he's playing great, man. He's playing great. Well, it was a fight they'd stop it right now. Yuha has a big lead with 17,500 to 2,500. But recognize that in no limit hold'em, Phil Gordon has only got to win two hands, and they'll be even in chips again. That's true. If he doubles up, breaks him twice, he would be right back in there. Okay, here we go. Flop is 7-7-9. Seven, seven, now, Yuha has flopped an open end straight. Here goes Phil. He's going all and in. And Phil Gordon has a queen nine. He's flopped the top pair with a queen kicker. Now, Yuha could gamble here because he's flopped an open end straight. Now, that's a lesson for everybody out there. He's in commanding position. He didn't risk his money with an open end straight draw. He didn't want to double fill up on that hand. He doesn't want to try to gamble these big pots unless he has the best hand. Well, Phil's low on chips, but these two players battled long and hard to get where they are. Phil beat seven of the greatest poker players in the world to win his division. Yuha beat 100 players from his side to win the amateur side. They're playing heads up. Right now, our amateur player, Yuha, is tattooing the professional player, Phil Gordon. Let's see if it turns around. Well, Yuha's on the button here. He picks up a nice hand. He's got ace-jack off suit. He opens the pot for 500. Phil Gordon... Phil's going all in with a pair of fives, a real hand. He's got two fives. He's not fooling around anymore. He bets his, his last $2,300. Phil Gordon says, I've had enough. Put me out of my pain. If you must, I'm going all in. And now the decision is on Yuha. He has the ace jack off suit. It's a good hand playing heads up. Does he want to play this pot? If he wins this hand, he'll be the champion. He's got a chance to take him out. What do you think he'll do, Vince? Well, I think, you know, uh, he's been lucky all afternoon with the ace and another card. This guy, his luck seems to be on his side. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. But Phil Gordon needs his hand bad. Got a chance to bust him. You got to take it. Yeah, I know. My hand is pretty good. <laughs> he's he did doing it. He's called. We have what's called a race. It's two fives against the ace jack. Ace jack. Ace here we go. Phil right. is a slight favorite here. Very slight. Let's see what happens on the flop. Whoa! Flop comes ace, ace, deuce. Huge flop. You are the flop. Three aces. Phil Gordon is going to need a five to stay alive in this championship. A seven comes off. One to go. It's a four. It is over. They high five each other. Very well done. Sensational poker. He held a lot of cards. Phil, a good sport, but he has been ravaged. Perfectly played by our man from Finland. Well played, you all.
You want to help us? Step over here. And you came all the way from Finland. Fantastic week you've had here. Give us your feelings right now. I feel fantastic. It's uh, <laughs> hard to believe. <laughs> Sensational poker all week long. We congratulate you for winning. That's it, and if you can believe it, the minnow ate the shark. See you next week at the World Poker Tour.